we're in Halloween just a couple of days away. Thoughts turn to the supernatural, and most people treat the subject lightly. Most people are skeptics, and they're not interested or concerned in the mysterious things which sometimes occur around them. However, today we have the story of one family which says it was forced into becoming concerned. This modest two-story house is situated on a quiet street on Chicago's northwest side. To everybody else on the block, the house is like any other. But to the people who live here, it's haunted. Ed and Marsha Becker bought their home a year ago. And shortly after they moved in with their baby, they claim unusual occurrences began. Uh, strange little things were happening. The telephone was coming off the hook. The cabinet doors were closing. Doors were opening, doors were closing. Uh, just strange things. The only thing that, that really bothered me was if things were to fly, like my mixer flew off the wall, landed right at my feet, and it didn't fall, it actually flew. It bent my house keys, my garage key, the same key twice, I have a different lock for every lock in the house. And I actually bent it and moved it, uh, one time it sat on top of the refrigerator, one time it sat in the kitchen sink. And this was at a time when my wife was on vacation, so there was nobody in the house but myself. The Beckers said they had to install a modern trip lever in their bathtub because the plug would mysteriously wrap itself around the faucet when they weren't looking. This past week, they said they were awakened by the sound of a woman crying. It came from the dining room, but there was no one in the house but themselves. I hated to think of what it was. Uh, I kind of put it out of my mind. And I tried to find a logical explanation for everything that happened. But, uh, we couldn't. Mrs. Becker had heard about people who supposedly are able to rid houses of ghosts or spirits. So she contacted them and convinced them to come to the house and see if anything could be done. William Darrell Davis and Joseph DeLuise, ministers of the Independent Spiritualist Church in Chicago, agreed to perform without fee an exorcism. That is a ceremony designed to rid something of evil spirits. An NBC News crew was permitted to film the ritual. We were confined with the residents of the house to the living room. Each of us was requested to wear a cross for protection during the exorcism, which was conducted in the dining room. An altar was fashioned, on which were placed candles, a Bible, a crucifix, bread and wine. At first there were prayers to God, and then the ministers gave each other communion. Reverend Deloise is a medium, and during the ritual, he went into a trance. He described it as a total relaxation of his mind and body, which he says allows him to communicate with spirits. Once he assumed this mental state, we, the spectators, felt a strong gust of wind from an open window that blew the curtains and rattled the Venetian blinds. Shortly thereafter, Reverend Deloise began talking, he claims the spirit used his vocal cords. The number, the combination. Why should it concern you? And you realize this can't be figured out. Why should you can understand it? Is it important to you? important to me. Why do you stay here? I'm going to get the number. In Reverend Deloise's hand was a cross in a mirror which he waved through the air. This was supposedly to show the troubled spirit that it had no reflection and therefore did not exist. Then he apparently came out of his trance and told Reverend Davis to offer the so-called spirit the bread and wine of communion. Then Reverend Davis issued what he called the warning. And so much of this house has been purified, let there be a warning. Or if the house is clean and it is not replaced with that of sorrow and with love, then beware the danger seven times the four which have left shall return. For this moment there is love. This moment there is release. And that which follows the individual will come over within himself and not from that which was here. Good. 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 
house. Following the ritual, the ministers went through every room in the house, as well as the roof and garage, spreading blessed salt. They said this would seal the house symbolically, keeping the spirit from returning. Reverend Delery said the spirit was an old woman who may have been gypped out of some money. Delery said she was worried about a number, possibly to a safety deposit box. The Beckers found the explanation plausible since they found out an old woman had died in the house before they bought it. It's been several days since the exorcism, and the Beckers report the house has been quiet. The phone remains on the receiver. The cabinet doors are still. The mixer stays securely on the wall. And there have been no mysterious footsteps in the back of the house. The exorcists say the ghost is gone. The Beckers hope they're right. Carol Simpson, NBC News.